Welcome to tutorial 3 of the Bird's Eye Paver Estimation Tool. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to import an existing landscape plan and just trace over the areas to determine quantities of pavers, base, and bedding volumes, and edge restraint. In many cases, a landscape plan may already exist, and depending on the complexity, it may be difficult to try and reproduce this from scratch using the Bird's Eye Estimation Tool. To easily handle this situation, we have added the ability to simply load any image into the background and trace the areas. This image can be almost anything from a hand sketch that you can take a picture of with your phone to a complex PDF generated by a landscape architect. For accurate quantities, the image must be to some scale and have at least one reference dimension shown on it. Going back to the bird's eye interface, we select the load image button. The image selection dialog box comes up and we choose the landscape plan we want to bring in. In this case, the landscape plan is a JPEG of a hand sketch that we just took with a phone. As mentioned, we can import almost any image file, including a PDF. Once the file is loaded into the window, we need to set the scale. This is easily done by tracing a known dimension. We can use the zoom in button to find a reference dimension. Here we can see that a small scale is shown that is 5 feet in length. You could use any dimension, such as the width of a sidewalk or other known length. Using the cursor, we will trace the scale with the red line. Once this is done, we input 5 feet into the field above this, then hit Done. We can see how the plan has been imported to scale. We can now select the lot width that fits the plan. Now we can start tracing the areas. Using the straight drawing tool, we can outline the main patio area. If you want to be more exact, we can zoom in while we are drawing and then use the pan command to navigate around. You'll notice that as we are drawing, and get to the edge of the page, it automatically pans in the direction you are drawing to allow you to continue. By clicking outside of the drawing area, we can scroll up and down the web page. We have traced the main area, so now we can assign a paver and a border. If we need to adjust the shape at all, we can click on any of the nodes and move them, for example, squaring up this corner. We can pan around and just check our points. To switch from panning to another command, just select that button. For example, if I hit select, I can now choose a node. Now we can zoom back out. If you remember, we had a pool and a grill island on this patio. To block these out and remove these areas from the quantity total, we need to be able to see them again. To do this, we select the transparent function, which allows you to see through the paver areas you have drawn. We can now use the object tools and draw the pool and grill island. Once these are drawn, we can put a border around them by selecting the shape and then selecting borders. We can select transparent again and bring back our main patio. If at any point you do not see the controls along the top, just click outside the graph paper and scroll up using your mouse or the slider on the right. To trace the areas along the bottom, click anywhere on the graph paper, then zoom in and pan down to the location. To draw the path, we can just trace it using the straight tool, or we can use the path command. We will use the path command since we know the width of the path will be 4 feet. 
Using the straight tool, we draw a line through the middle of the path as shown. We can start anywhere on the main patio because the bird's eye tool just subtracts any overlapping areas. We can extend it any distance into the fire pit circle as well. When we get to the end of the line, we right click and select create path, then enter four feet. Again, we can add a border, then right click on the shape and send to bottom so that it's under the main patio shape. Using the circle drawing tool, we can trace the fire pit, then add a border. Now we can quickly drop in some trees just to generally indicate where the designer had planned on some planting. By grabbing the handles around each tree, you can easily make them larger or smaller. We will now save the project, then click outside of the drawing area to scroll down and hit Quick Estimate. You can see all of our paving stone quantities broken down by the area and then the material totals. We also now have the option of creating a full report and creating a PDF plan. The previous example showed how you can import and trace a simple hand sketch as long as it's to scale. We will run through one more quick example now which shows you how you can import a more professional PDF designed by a landscape designer for example and quickly estimate the quantities. First we start a new project then as before select load image. In this case, the dimension we know is the length of the pool, which is 35 feet. So we trace this dimension and input 35. We now select the proper lot width. We can try a couple of different lot widths until we get something that just fits the plan. Once we have the lot width set, we can zoom in on the plan to a distance that makes it easy to trace individual areas. After zooming in, we can pan to our first area, which is the front driveway. Using the straight line drawing tool, we can trace the driveway. We start in the bottom left corner and continue counterclockwise. You could go either way, but always remember where you started so you can close the shape off at the end. After setting the first couple of nodes, which have straight lines between them, we need to transition to a curve. To do this, we move our cursor out of the last node and right click to see the menu. We select curve line. Remember, you do not have to follow the curve exactly, as you can go back and change the shape when it's done. After the curve, you move the cursor out of the last node again and right click, selecting straight. Then finish the shape and close it off in the bottom left corner. We will now select a paver to fill the area. Once we have the paver in, we can go back to our curve and click on the middle of the line and pull it back a little bit so that it follows the original design better. We can click on any node to move or adjust it as well. Once our shape is good, we can add two layers of borders around the outside. Moving on to the path on the right side of the house, we will use the straight line tool and the create path function to trace this. As before, we will draw a line through the middle of the path, then set the width. Again, we can start the line anywhere in the driveway as overlapping areas will be just subtracted. Notice as we move the line up the path, we automatically pan in this direction so we can continue to draw. At the end of the path, we right click and select convert to path, then enter the path width. As before, we will add two layers of borders. Finally, we will click anywhere within the path shape and right click, then select send to bottom so the driveway shape is predominant. Moving up the page, we will trace the large backyard patio. We will start in the bottom left corner again, but you can start anywhere you wish as long as you remember the start point. Selecting the straight line tool, we begin to trace the patio area. As we move up the page, it automatically pans in the direction we are drawing. 
In this location, we transition from a straight line to a curve. However, the curve design is in the opposite direction of how our tool naturally transitions from a straight line. This is no problem. Just draw any curve between the start and end point. Then we can go back and fix it afterwards. Continue with the straight line and close the shape. Now we can go back to our curve portion and just click anywhere on the curve, the select function, and drag it to the correct orientation. We will add two borders as well. Finally, we can select any node and move it around to fix anything that is not quite drawn perfectly the first time around. Make sure the node turns red before you move it, or you will just move the entire shape, and not just that node. Just as a side note, you can use the undo button along the top to reverse any command you don't want to keep. To block out the swimming pool, we first need to switch to transparent mode in order to see it. By selecting transparent, we can now see the swimming pool. We then use the square object tool to draw the swimming pool. We will also add a border. Finally, if we pan over to the left side of the property, we see a pretty complex area that has a mix of varying curves and straight lines. There are a number of ways to trace this. We could use a mix of circles and square shapes that overlap, for example, but I think the most straightforward way of tracing it would be to use the straight and curved line drawing tools. Before we start, I want to emphasize a point that was made earlier about transitioning from a straight line to a curve. Sometimes the curve drawing tool will not naturally follow the curve that's drawn on the design. The natural curve wants to continue in the direction of the line, like a tangent. However, if you run into this type of case, just draw any curve segment between the start and end point of the curve on the design, and then go back and drag it into the correct orientation afterwards, as shown here. This is good to know because almost every curve in the shape we are tracing here is being uncooperative, but again, it's easy to handle. Starting in the bottom left corner of the walkway, we use the straight line tool to begin drawing. The first curve is in the natural direction, so we are able to easily follow it, then switch back to a straight line. After this, most of the curves are at odd angles to our straight lines, so we just focus on putting curved segments down, then we can fix them later. We continue to close off the area. Initially, we have a shape that looks nothing like the design. So we simply click on each curve and bring it back into alignment. Even with many curves, you can see how easy it is to bring our shape back into alignment. Finally, we can add two borders. Now that we have traced all of our areas, we can save the project, then hit Quick Estimate to see our quantities. We will also create a full report and a PDF of the site plan. Thank you for watching tutorial 3 of the Bird's Eye Paver Estimation Tool. We look forward to your feedback and comments. Thanks.